You're listening to the Orange Power Podcast, a product of Oklahoma State Athletics. Here are your hosts, Jessica Mori and the voice of the Cowboys, Dave Hunziker. We start, as always, by talking Cowboy baseball with OSU head coach Josh Holliday. And what a little stretch this has been. You know, a great Bedlam series. You, you went two on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, to win the Bedlam Series. Then you have to turn right around and play Wichita State on Tuesday. I mean, you know, I would wager, you know, coming off that Bedlam Series to turn around and play Tuesday again. There was a lot going on over the weekend. And then, you know, Wichita State team, he'd played just a week earlier. That's That was a lot, right? <clears throat> yeah, I think um, when you kind of look at the week that was, Wichita State at Wichita, come home, Bedlam, then Wichita State once again at home, uh, five good baseball games in a, in a calendar week. Um, two teams that, you know, for years and years and years have always been, uh, you know, teams that have gotten the best out of us, certainly with all the great tradition and rivalry games that we've played over the years. But I think uh, a couple things stand out in that stretch of baseball for me. One, the come from behind win at Wichita 10 days ago. Yeah. That was important. Uh, the difficulty of the Friday night game after uh, taking a, a pretty good punch to the gut uh, and, and losing game one. The, the way game two was playing out and kind of that uh, late start of the game and the emotional having to get yourself back up off the mat a little bit. Yeah. When the yeah. kids got back up in the seventh inning of that game and turned the tide and ultimately came back and won what was a really, really tremendous game, um, that was a huge turning point for us as a team, not just in that moment, but maybe you know for a season when the, you look at the way those games pivot. Absolutely. Because of, of what came to follow, which was a uh, – a dominant Sunday performance by our team. We played a great <clears throat> all-around game of baseball Sunday with Bryce pitching beautifully. Uh, we were very good on offense. We played a clean game. So the Saturday pivot game from the seventh inning on, the response on Sunday, and then to your point, having to kind of uh, dial back up the concentration, emotion, and focus it takes to play good baseball again on a Tuesday after all of the kind of the excitement and uh, you know the, the hoopla that goes into playing in front of 7,000 on Friday, 8,000 on Saturday. 7,000 on Sunday, that really elevates you. You know, the fans and the ballpark in that series, it elevates kind of your uh, awareness and your stimulus of everything you're doing. And so to come back on a Tuesday, uh, I was proud of the effort. We had a lot of guys to the mound Tuesday, uh, swung the bats pretty well from the fifth inning on. And uh, they showed, uh, again, why they're becoming a good team. The DNA to learn how to win and win different ways and win at different times is an important thing to develop, and the kids are doing a nice job of that. Yeah, you, you're talking about that winning DNA. One thing, if I remember correctly, happened during the OU series. I think he had nine different guys that knocked in runs. I think he may have had nine different guys that had multiple hit games. I mean, that, that sort of speaks to what you're talking about, right, in terms of yeah. lots of different ways, lots of different guys making contributions. <clears throat> yeah, you always notice some really great statistics, too, that sometimes I miss, and I think that's a great point. Um, you can't win in various ways unless you have lots of contributors. And uh, I think when you look at just the nature of uh, a three-game weekend, it's going to take uh, somebody having a great weekend, which this past weekend Rock probably fit that. He probably fit that title uh, with his kind of performance. And it's going to take somebody coming through clutch, uh, which we had that. And then it's going to take somebody kind of doing the dirty work, getting a bunt down, which we had that. Uh, getting a pinch hit, uh, which to your point, uh, we've had tremendous success with pinch hitting. Jackson Kroll came off the bench on Saturday yeah. and had two base hits as, yes. a, as a guy coming off the bench. So you just start looking at key contributions, guys coming off the bench, guys getting down bunts, guys making big swings in clutch situations. Uh, and really, you know, just some of the dirty work stuff like we talk about, a guy putting a ball in play with two strikes and getting a base hit to start a rally like Marcus did in the ninth inning. You know, his two strike hit. Got the whole thing started. Houston's bunt <clears throat> was a big deal because, you know, bunting a guy throwing the baseball in the mid-90s is hard. And uh, he got the bunt down with two strikes. So you look at the different ways guys contribute to victories. Uh, good, solid defense once again all over the field. And uh, just a gutty effort. You know, a number of kids. Uh, I thought fan soccer over the weekend was tremendous. I thought he uh, showed, um, you know, why he's becoming one of the best relief pitchers in the country. Uh, Nolan on the mound has continued to show how his development as a relief pitcher along with being a uh, third baseman uh, outfielder is really valuable to our team. So just a lot of guys doing good things and uh, total team effort. You know, and it's interesting. You're talking about different guys contributing. You turn around Tuesday night, Rock Reggio gets hit mm -hmm. and stays in the game for a while, 
goes up to the plate, gets a 2-2 count, and obviously a lot of discomfort, could not continue. Rhett Brown comes in. I don't believe he had played any second base in a game this year, if I remember correctly. That's correct, yep. and, and he ends up homering. And yep. then he turn, he's a part of a big double play, helping turn a double play that sort of snuffed out any Wichita State hope. I mean, yeah. I, mean I know you recited several examples, but there's another mm. one that people may not realize. He just jumps right in there and, and, and boom. <clears throat> yeah, you couldn't be more uh, spot on. And, uh, you know, you think back a week ago, he did the same thing coming off the bench at Wichita State. Yeah with a huge base hit to take us from down 3-2 to two to up 4-2 with a two-out, two-RBI base hit. So uh, kids like Brett who work hard, uh, have a team-first attitude, uh, they, they take their role and embrace it. They're ready for the team at all times. Uh, that's what makes a really good team. You have to have selfless people willing to uh, do what the team needs of them whenever and however. Uh, and let's face it, all kids would like a little bit more. You know, everybody would like a few more at-bats, a few more starts, uh, maybe an expanded role. But to truly have a team, uh, you have to have guys that are willing to, to do their part, and then when they get their opportunities, capitalize. And obviously that can lead to, to more and more opportunities. So I appreciate the way the kids continue to, to function like a team, uh, do the things necessary to win baseball games, because it's going to take a whole lot more of that with the, the challenging second half of the season in front of us. So you mentioned McLean working in relief. Of course, the last pitch on Saturday night when he, when he struck out OU was a, was a cool 99 miles an hour. And then Trevor Martin starts. He had been your closer. He has nine saves. He starts Tuesday night, gives up one, in, one run in three innings and sort of sets the table for everything that happened in your win against Wichita State Tuesday night. You mentioned fan so So where do you see things as far now as the back end of the bullpen? Well, I think the great thing we have right now is some options. Um, obviously, Roman's been super valuable in those sixth, seventh, eighth innings to get a good start to the end. He can continue in that role or slide back a little bit if need be on a particular day. Uh, Nolan's certainly an option to pitch in those seventh, eighth, ninth innings. He's proven he can do that. <clears throat> we got Huey to the mound on Tuesday yeah. and, and saw a glimpse of why we've always felt like pitching was definitely something we wanted to, to get him into. Um, it seems like right now maybe it's the right time to start to, to kind of integrate him into that pitching mix. Uh, and then obviously we wanted to get Trevor some work in a non-save situation just so he could go out there and breathe and pitch a little bit. And every time you pitch, it's a, a save situation. Oftentimes you can't, <clears throat> excuse me, get to your other pitches. It's it's solely relying on on the fastball and maybe a sharp slider, and you don't have any room to kind of operate. And um, I thought he did a tremendous job of, of taking countless safe situations head on to start the season, and uh, I thought it was a great uh, thought on Rob's end, Coach Walton's end, to give him a start, let him change the music a little bit, uh, so he could feel himself back on the mound, and then re. Uh, incorporate him back into whatever role, closer role, late inning role, or an expanded role of maybe pitching more innings, whatever's best for the team, right? But we do have options and we do have guys with experience. So you got a guy in Trevor that's got nine saves and countless touches late in the game. And now he has some company that can support him to where he doesn't maybe have to go back to back. Uh, or if he does go back to back, there's somebody there to save the other couple of games a week that you hope you're in contention to win. So Developing depth and developing options and also, you know, again, developing players. Uh, right. Trevor's just a second-year player. And so developing <clears throat> the other elements of his pitching repertoire, his other pitches and other skills is, is always high on our list. And trying to do all this while competing for a championship. Now you face a West Virginia team that's probably the surprise of the conference up to this point. They are in first place. What have you seen from them that has helped them maybe surpass some expectations early on? Well, I, I've always said this about their teams. Their, their kids are tough as nails. Uh, they travel early uh, due to the challenges of their weather. So they're tested. They're a tested team early. They go on the road. They see different environments. Uh, I've always I've had great respect for their players because of the way they take on the challenge of, of being a cold weather team. That being said, they have a lot of talent. They have some of the, the fastest players in our conference. I believe they're leading the nation in stolen bases. So they play kind of a fast break type of offense where they run and, and really use their athleticism to their advantage. They have some, some good arms uh, on the mound that can bring the ball to home plate at a pretty high rate of speed. So there's some good arms, there's some tremendous athletes, um, and there's, I think, a confidence to them about how they're playing. And they're playing with a little bit of freedom. Um, you see how they've won a few games. They've won some games with a steal of home and some different types of plays. So uh, add all that together, they're off to a good start in conference, having uh, gone to TCU and won two of three and swept Baylor. So they're a good team. Uh, they've always been a great series for us every year. We've always had 
highly competitive series is, and I have a tremendous amount of respect for their coaching staff with uh, Coach Maisie, who's a friend, and obviously uh, <clears throat> Steve Sabins and Mark Genther on his staff are two guys that uh, were here with us at Oklahoma State who I love dearly. So they'll be well prepared, they're talented, and they're playing with confidence. And those are all usually good elements of good baseball teams and, and should make for a great series. Coming up, Jessica has a conversation with Miranda Ellish. Stay with us. Hello, sweet babies. Welcome to your new home. You have changed our life, and you may even change the world. And because of you, 2021 is the best year ever. Mercy has helped moms deliver babies for nearly 200 years. To find out how to welcome your baby at Mercy, visit mercy.net slash OSU mom. At Academy Sports and Outdoors, bikes for the whole family are just a click away. Buy online at academy.com with our free in-store assembly. Your next set of wheels plus helmets, pads, and water bottles will be waiting for you at our in-store pickup counter. Get to the fun faster with our in-store pickup and free assembly at Academy Sports and Outdoors. At og and the energy we deliver is more than electrical. We energize the future by balancing our efforts to provide the lowest rates possible with our responsibility to protect the environment for future generations. That's why we've strengthened our power grid through new technologies, leading to a 40% reduction in CO2 emissions, which, when combined with our rates, makes us an industry leader. Because at og and we do more than energize a power grid. At og and we energize life. Welcome back, football fans. We'll see you in the fridge. Welcome into another edition of the Orange Power Podcast. This week, we are talking cowgirl softball with pitcher Miranda Ellish. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. All right, so your journey to OSU has been an interesting one, an uncommon journey, we'll say. Um, so kind of walk me through what got you to Stillwater. Yeah, well, I started out my college career at University of Oregon, um, and then fall of my junior year, I went to the transfer portal and transferred to Texas, um, and then I got to come to OSU and play OSU my junior year. Um, oh my gosh, it was crazy. Um, now I know I, they call OSU fans the best fans in the country. Um, they're on us the whole time. <laughs> um, and then I ended up quitting um, with no intentions on coming back. And then in August of 2021, I got a wild hair and I was like, you know what, I wanna play again. Um, and then I got in contact with Coach G and he was happy to have me here and I was happy to be here. And so now I'm a poke and I'm excited about it. I'm a cowgirl, <laughs> not a poke. <laughs> I think you could say you're a can poke. I? I feel like we say go poke. So you're yeah, a poke. I mean, like, poke, I think you can. Girl. Yeah, I think you can. Poke. I feel like poke is like, um, it's not like male or female. It's just like everybody okay. is a poke, I feel okay. like. But I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so recently, a lot of, um, you know, articles and stories have been coming out about you and about your journey here. And like we talked about, it's uncommon. Mm -hmm. But you left the game. Why did you decide that you thought, you know, what went into that decision of, hey, I'm, I don't want to play softball anymore? Yeah, so um, COVID obviously hit in March of 2020 and uh, seasons were put on pause and really the world just shut down. And um I went through some life changes um, during that summer and then come fall when I went back to Texas, it just was an environment for me to be in, uh, a good environment for me to be in. And I found myself really struggling with um, depression mainly at the time. And um, then throughout 2021, I developed pretty crippling anxiety um, as well as still having depression. So. Um, I just realized like, hey, like if I stay here, um, I think my mental health is just gonna keep deteriorating and 
Um, for the first time in my life, I actually quit something, and I, I quit the sport that I had been in for 20 years of my life. And um, it was a really tough decision. Um, but I don't think, I don't know where I would be, honestly, if I had kept playing. I don't know if I would have made it through all of that. And um, just kind of stepping away allowed me to focus on myself and really prioritize what is important to me, which um, at the top of the list is my mental health. I have to be right with myself um, before I'm right with anybody else. And um, yeah, and just kind of shining a light on how important mental health is, because if that's suffering, then um, I think a lot of things around us feel like they're crumbling down too, even if that might not be the case. So yeah, I, I quit for my mental health and um, I don't regret any bit of it because I wouldn't be here if I didn't, so. Who kind of, did anyone help you with that decision or was that solely like, this is what I wanna do or did you bring your parents in or, or how did that kind of go when you ultimately made the decision? Yeah, so um, we were in winter break and at the beginning of winter break, I still had the intentions of going back and playing that 2021 season. Um, and then like as the days got closer to returning to Austin, I just felt like my anxiety ramping up and I was like, oh my gosh, I, I literally cannot go back there. Like I would be physically sick, like thinking wow. about going back there. And, um, and yeah, it was just kind of on my own. Honestly, I remember um, my old coach, like called my parents and was like, we haven't really heard from Miranda over winter break. And then my parents called me and I was like, I don't want to play softball anymore. Um, and I think that was really difficult for them to hear. And it was really difficult for me to say. Um, but that was like the toughest two people like to tell that I don't want to play anymore was my mom and dad because of all the sacrifices and um, things they did to get me where I am today. Um, but I think at the end of the day, they saw how much I was hurting. So like they really understood like, okay, she wouldn't be doing this if she wasn't bad off right now. So, yeah. And, you know, mental health is obviously it's being talked about more now, but at that time it really wasn't. I think mm -hmm. the pandemic brought on a lot more openness to talk about um, mental health and normalizing that, hey, everybody needs help. Everyone is going through something. Yeah. So for you, was it kind of difficult just not, did you have someone to talk to or were you just kind of on an island being like, man, I feel this way, but like maybe it's something else or maybe it's, you know, it's just all in my head or something. Yeah, I mean, I remember like in my earlier college days, like being like, oh my gosh, my anxiety is so bad. But like now knowing what I felt, like I did not know like what anxiety was in my yeah. early college days. And so like, then I just was like, oh my gosh, like, is it in my head? So I, I kind of isolated myself. Yeah. Um, I don't, I'm not someone to really talk about how I feel or what I'm going through. And um, I don't like the spotlight to be on me whatsoever. Um, so I feel like just kind of like talking about it made things about me and I don't like things being about me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I kind of isolated myself and I was just really in my own head trying to figure it out because I didn't know if I was just like thinking about it and then I was just like manifesting it to happen because I thought I was maybe being overdramatic or something. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I isolated myself and I've tried to figure a lot of things out on my own, um, in my own head. But at the end of the day, I think I finally came to terms with like, no, you're not making this up. Like this is actually happening to you. And, um, yeah. And I started talking to a therapist like towards the end of my time at Texas. Um, so that kind of helped like validate like, okay, like this is really happening. And like, you do kind of need to figure it out. Yeah. And you're not the only one, you know, going through this, obviously, I'm yeah. sure there are plenty of other student athletes out there that deal with the exact same thing. Yeah. And so do you feel like you being so open about this is really, you know, going to help other athletes say, Hey, you know, it's not all in my head either. Mm -hmm. I hope it does. Yeah. Um, like you said, it's not really talked about and it's starting to get talked about more, but like, if we just look at the amount of student athletes, I mean, just in the last couple months that have taken their lives, mm -hmm. um, I feel like maybe if more of a light was sh shined on this, then they would be like, okay, like this isn't in my head. I can talk to somebody. I do have people that are there for me. And like, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, gosh, when I saw that thing about Katie Meyer, um, when she took her life at Stanford, it was just like heart wrenching because I was like, wow, I've been there before and I've, I've been close to that. And, um, 
just like I wish everybody knew that they weren't alone and like no matter how horrible it is like once you hit rock bottom you can only go up from there and like you know you just have to celebrate every little thing as a victory and I hope me being more open about it saves lives and um, helps people realize that like hey if she's going through it and she got through it I can get through it too so yeah and I mean you were at the top of your game. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were a big, you're a big deal now, but you're a big deal then, obviously, in college softball and everything. And so it wasn't like, you know, you were someone who didn't really play. I mean, you were a big deal and you were going through that. So mm -hmm. I think that, um, which probably put more pressure on you, um, you know, and probably led into to yeah. a lot of, um, you know, those feelings and things. So I feel like that when people see that, and now when they see you here, I mean, all, when I watch you play, I'm like, she's smiling. Like, you are so happy. Yeah. Like, if I didn't know this whole backstory, I'd be like, oh, my gosh. Like, <laughs> she seems like a genuinely happy person. Mm -hmm. Like, she's just enjoying life, having the best time. Mm -hmm. And would you agree? Do you feel like that's, you know, that that's real that you're portraying? Like, you're, you're really happy. Oh, my gosh, yeah. I absolutely love playing softball again. Um, I'm hoping maybe I can play after college now, which was never a thing for me before. Um Every day I just go, come to the field just so happy to be there. Um, grateful for the opportunity that Coach G and the team have given me to um, be a part of something really special. And I still have my bad days and I still have my little anxiety attacks. Um, but now I know how to handle it and I know that I have a huge family here to, you know, pick me up when I am feeling down. And Coach G's really good at like reading me and like he can just tell, I think, if something's up. Um, and he just, maybe does like little things or says little things, you know, that kind of pick me up. And um, I'm just really grateful for that. Yeah. And I read in an article that um, you meet with him, you know, and, and you're able to open up with him mm -hmm. and, and talk to him and he really is able to help you. How, you know, you haven't been here that long. How have you been able to build such a close relationship with him in that, you know, short period of time? Um, I think Coach G really prioritizes us as people before athletes. And um, he really is looking to grow our relationships off the field too. And um, he cares about me as a human being and I think that's really important and so like even though he knows me as a softball player he's taken the time to get to know like who I am to my core as a person and I think that like really helps build a relationship um, but as for how quickly I think I'm just like a goober and <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just always doing something stupid and <laughs> coach G <laughs> probably is just like all right I just have to take her how she is so <laughs> Um, so yeah, but no, I, it doesn't feel like I've only been here since January and that I've only known Coach G since like, gosh, September. Um, yeah. I feel like I've known him for forever and same with all the girls and the coaching staff. Um, but yeah, no, I, I don't know. I feel like I've, <laughs> this is my home. So I don't know. They just take me how I am and they love me for who I am. So yeah. I love that. Yeah. And so what drew you, you said you played at Oklahoma State, um, mm -hmm. you played when Texas played here. Yeah. Um, and then you, what drew you to Oklahoma State, you know, once you got into the portal? Um, well, I played against them, so I knew that they were tough competitors and they were a great team um, and they were gritty. I knew they worked really hard. And, um, gosh, I just remember watching them in the last two postseasons and just watching how hard they fight and how hard they compete. And I am a really tough competitor and I love competing and I hate to lose. And um, this team just looked like a family. And now knowing here, like they are the epitome of what a family is and they have each other's backs. And what they show on the field is how they are off the field too. Like, well, they're really tough and gritty on the field. We're really like loving and yeah. crazy and fun off the field. but. But yeah, no, I just, I watched them compete and I wanted to be a part of it and they beat me. And I remember I gave a speech in, I think it was beginning of February. And I was like, they say, if you can't beat them, join them. So <laughs> that's what I did. Hey, and it's worked out really <laughs> yeah. well. Yeah. So, um, you know, for your time here, um, February, a little bit rough trying to get back into the swing mm -hmm. of things because you had not played softball. You'd been teaching lessons. Is yeah. that correct? Okay. Yeah. Let's pivot to that real quick. You were teaching, um, you know, young girls softball lessons. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, you know, read a really good article on okstate.com about, um, you know, how that kind of helped you want to stay in softball and watching yeah. them, you know, the smiles on their faces. What was that like for you, you know, when you're teaching a lesson to a young girl when, you know, maybe a couple days ago, you were not in a good place, you know, and you're, you didn't want, you're like, man, I don't want to do this sport anymore. But then you see the young girls 
yeah. and they're loving it. They haven't, you know, wh what was that like for you? Um, it was so rewarding. I absolutely loved going to lessons every single day. I basically took that on as my full-time job. So I was giving like 30 to 40 lessons a week. Oh, wow. Um, and like I would, I mean, they didn't start till three because they don't get out of school till three. So like, even if I was having the crappiest day up until three o'clock, like I would show up to the facility at three. And then when my first lesson came in, like my day instantly shift because like they're little kids, like, you know, like life's good for little kids. Yeah. And like, they just and, like and celebrate the little things and just love life and like make the most of it. And, um, I was just like, they would just instantly light, light me up. And I don't know, just watching them like succeed and like do things that they didn't think that they could do or like throw the ball two miles per hour harder or like yeah. they would celebrate it and they would be excited for it and um I and maybe I inspired them or I drove them to be a, a pitcher or a hitter or play softball and like as much as I did that for them like they really just kept me in the game and they showed me like that I could have love for the game again and um yeah and they're a huge reason why I'm sitting here today. And now they're probably watching you on TV and mm -hmm. they're probably like, that's my coach. Like, look yeah. at her. And now you give them that too to say, hey, I can see her and yeah. she's doing it. She's doing exactly what she's teaching us to do. Yeah. And it's been cool. Like when we were in Clearwater, one of them drove down from Alabama and oh, came I love and watched. That. Yeah. And then in Memphis, another one came. So it's been really, really fun just to like be able to see them. And like I was always watching them and like I think they might have had an idea of who I was, um, like watching YouTube videos and stuff. Um, but then like to actually see me like in uniform, I think it was really cool for them. And it was really cool for me too. I was so nervous. Like, <laughs> I was like, do not do bad. Like, they're um, even though I could probably give up back to back to back to back <laughs> home runs and they'd still be like, Miranda's awesome. You know? But, um, but no, yeah, I definitely felt added pressure having them there. <laughs> I'm sure, you, like you said, they're proud of you either yeah. way, and they think that's so cool. Yeah. And that's awesome you keep in touch with them, yeah. um, and you work with them, and that's that's so cool. Thanks. So, okay, going back to this season, so February kind of just had to get back into it. Yeah. Um, and then March, I mean, unbelievable. I mean, you're oh, killing thanks. it pitching and hitting. It's awesome to watch. You have Thank all you. this success, um, and just any time you go to the plate, you're like, okay, well, she's going to get a hit somehow. One way or another, she's probably going to get on base, or she's going to bring them. So, um, you know, what's what changed for you? What was what was it going like? For, I'm asking a lot of questions. <laughs> so in February, how did you kind of balance the struggle and knowing that, hey, I can get there. I know that I can be the player that you are right now. Um, well, Honestly, a lot of times I don't even think I believed that I was going to get back to where I was. But the coaching staff and all the girls, like, I mean, I cried up in our hitting facility <laughs> so many times because I was like, I cannot even see the ball. Like, I just felt off. Um, but, you know, they just kept reminding me, like, it's a process. You're not going to pick up right where you left off. You haven't played literally since March of 2020. And I was like, okay, like, you're right, but I don't believe it. Yeah. So I should be back where I was already. Um, but no, I just really put my trust in the coaching staff um, and just let my teammates keep building me up because a lot of it I feel like was between my ears, like it was all in my head and I was just kind of my own worst enemy um, at the beginning of this season because I just wasn't believing in myself and I, then I was just like, I had a talk with Coach G when we were in Clearwater and like something clicked and I was like, you know what, you just got to fake it till you make it. Like just <laughs> fake it. Like even if you don't That's believe it, just <laughs> fake it. Just act like you know what you're doing. Act like you believe that you should be here. And that's what I did. And then once I started doing that, like I stopped listening to the bad, the bad guy on yeah. my shoulder and started listening to the good guy and things just started working out. And I feel like the team really came together and we really started playing well in March. And, um, that has a huge impact on my success as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So you threw a no, no hitter March 9th against Minnesota. What was that like for you when you finally, was that when it clicked? Like, Okay, I'm back. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't even know it was a no-hitter until, like, the seventh inning. I looked at the scoreboard. I was like, why did you look at the scoreboard? Why did you look at that? Um, but, yeah, no, I think, I think yeah, that's probably when I was like, okay, like, you can do it. Yeah. Like, you know, like, because – in February, I was like, why did you come back to play? Like, you do you do not have a place here anymore, um, just in the softball, in this 
competitive softball world. And I was like, oh my gosh, Miranda, what were you thinking? Like, you're no Michael Jordan, you're no <laughs> Kat Osterman, get off of the field. Um, but yeah, no, definitely after after that Minnesota game, I was like, okay, like you do still got it. Like it is in there and um, just keep on, I've just been like, keep trying to dig it out of wherever it is, like wherever it was stored yeah. for like a year and a half. Um, I've just been trying to find it and I feel like I have found it. And, um, and yeah, I really just have to keep my head in the right place just because like I can get really mad at myself and really down on myself. And when you do that, you start pressing. And when you press, it just, nothing goes how you want it to. So um, I think the biggest thing is I've realized like softball is just a game. Yeah. Um, and I just keep reminding myself of that because like there is so much more um, to me and to this world than softball. And as much as it's given me and as amazing as it is, um, I just can't, I just can't be so hard on myself over a game, Yeah, you know, because yeah. like I'm going to leave the field and I'm going to go home and I want to enjoy myself at home. I don't want to be mad at myself <laughs> over what I did or didn't do yeah. in that game. So, and so, um, you mentioned life off the field. What is your life like off the field? What kind of stuff do you like to do when you're not at the ballpark? Um, well, today, me, Julia, Shy, and Kylie are going horseback riding. Oh, fun. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we're so excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just like to get out and do stuff like that. Like, I went to um, this place called Woola Rock. Okay. And it's in Pawhuska. Okay. I don't know if I said that yeah, right. Yeah, that's right, I think. Um, and, like, it's, I love wild animals. I love okay. nature. Yeah. Um, so, like, one day I went and I drove to this reserve and saw wild buffalo. And, like, I was like, oh, my gosh, my <laughs> life is made. I went to Montana this summer and we got to go to Yellowstone. And I was like, I am I am moving to Montana and I am becoming a park ranger when I retire. <laughs> I am living in one of these cabins. Like, I am living on this park. Yes. Oh no. Um, and then, like, we went to this place called Woola Rock and it had, like, a bunch of buffalo and wild animals and stuff. So, like, I'm a goober, like I already said. And, like... I could just, like, go and drive around a drive through safari, like, all day, and my, like, life would be made. That's so, so much fun, that's, though. That's what I love. I love animals. I love doing stuff yeah. like that. I found a dog. A dog showed up in my backyard, found his owner. His name was Cowboy, and he Whoa. was 13. Oh, my gosh. I know. He Had, was really sweet. Did he have a collar or anything? No, you... I just posted him on Facebook, oh and I gosh. found his home. Oh. He was from the street over. Oh, that's so nice. I'm sure that owner is very grateful. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 But I just like stuff like that. Yeah. Do you have your own animals? Um, yes. So when I was at Oregon, I got two dogs that live Whoa. with my parents okay. now. So they're like basically my parents' dogs, <laughs> Mo and Nala. Mo's a St. Bernard and Nala's a Siberian Husky. Two giant dogs when you were like a freshman in college? My, yeah, I'm nuts. <laughs> I'm crazy. <laughs> I also had a hedgehog at one point. Okay. I had a bearded dragon, but it creeped me out a little bit, so I had to take it back to the oh my, How long did you have a bearded dragon <laughs> Like for? two days. It, and why? I don't, you just saw an, it, and you were yeah, like, it's, it's just, cool. Yes, it's just cool. <laughs> I, I literally, like, just love animals, but then I was like, it's watching me when I sleep. <laughs> Like I can, Probably. I cannot. I have a cat named Greta. Okay. She's really cool. I got her while I was at Texas. I didn't get any dogs at Texas, okay. so my parents were happy about yeah. that. <laughs> what did they say when you were like, um, I bought two dogs, and they're both giant? Okay, well, I didn't buy them at the same time. Okay. I bought one. You got your dog a dog. <laughs> yes, I got my dog a dog. Um told my parents about Nala, like, as soon as I got her. I got her in January of 2017. Um, and then when I got Mo in, like, June of 2017, <laughs> I, like, tried to hide it a little bit. And then, like, I think I hid it for, like, three hours. My mom's like, what are you doing? And I was like, nothing. <laughs> She's like, did you just get a dog? And I was like, how do you know this? Like, how do you know this? I didn't even. <laughs> and, um, yeah, no, they they love them like their own. They're their very own dogs now and um they take such good care of them even though nala escapes are like she just runs through the electric fence oh, and like, great. rides the lightning <laughs> and then we'll go chase after a deer um, that's worth the risk for her she risks it to get the biscuit yeah like. no she does she does she has an apple tag on her now she has an air tag okay. so like if she does escape yeah they know where she is but yeah no um no they they really have been great about it. I still send them dog food. It's like my, it's like my child's food. Yeah. I send them <laughs> dog food. Um, and, and yeah, no, they're living a great life. Yeah. With my mom and dad and my brother, uh, 
he loves them too. And my sister just moved out, but like when she was in high school, I would always see Nala on her Snapchat <laughs> yeah. stories, like breaking into the rooms because they're not allowed in our bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> so my sister would always smuggle Nala into her room. Yeah. And yeah, no, they're they're living, and my parents have been awesome, and I'm really grateful for them. So. I'm sure they knew, like going in, they're like, okay, these are gonna end up being our dogs at some point. They're gonna end yeah. up living with us because, like, softball is just so busy. Like you. To have to, I have one dog right now, and I can barely like yeah. handle it to go home to let her out at lunch. <laughs> and I'm not playing a sport. So I can yeah, imagine no, it. Like I had them. I, I became a single dog mom while I was at Oregon. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? Um, but like, they were really, really good. It's that huskies are like literal escape artists. Yeah. Like I'm not kidding. <laughs> like, literally, we had like a ring ceremony. So I went to the football game. You know, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be the cool mom. I'm gonna let them hang out in the backyard today because we had like a huge tall <laughs> fence, like literally seven feet tall. Came home, Nala's gone. I had to go bail her out of jail. <laughs> yeah. And then after I went to the transfer portal at Oregon, I became a nanny. So like I was nannying on like I think it was like a Sunday. I came home, we had like a 12 panel glass door. Uh -huh. The St. Bernard's head's like laying out of like one of the bottom panels. I was like, there's no way. Nala like busted <laughs> through the glass and just was gone. How do you keep getting her back? She doesn't go far. Like she literally twice was around the corner and yeah. then once I had to go bail her out of jail. So. <laughs> <laughs> My God, yeah. that's hilarious. And then you had the, the hedgehog? What was the hedgehog's name? And His how name did was that come Richie. To be? Richie the hedgehog. Okay. Yeah, he came before Nala. Okay. Um, and then like my past, my ex-boyfriend, when we dated my freshman year at Oregon, he took Richie home for Christmas break. And then like, I don't know. I was like, dude, a hedgehog, really? Like you can't cuddle with it. Yeah. You know? And then like, I was like, man, I really want a dog. Like, yeah. I really want Nala. So this is so bad. <laughs> we sold Richie to a great home yeah. and then took that money and went and got and Nala. Nala. <laughs> hey, Richie's probably living his best Dude, life somewhere is. in Oregon right he now. Is, yeah. Just, I mean, yeah. you're a hedgehog that lives in Oregon. What more could you ask? Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> exactly. exactly. Um, okay. So if you could, in your future, you want to own any animal that you legally can own. What, what animal is like your dream animal? Um, so actually my dream is to like live on a ranch and just have like a little bit of everything. Yeah. So like a horse or two, maybe some cows, some goats. I really, really want chickens. And okay. like, I am so close to building a chicken coop in my back because <laughs> I was at tractor supply and I literally saw like baby chicks. I was yeah. like, oh my gosh. <laughs> They're there. When I was I in know. college, I, um, got a like a baby chick and then a duck I guess that's the same thing I don't like uh -huh. someone one of the girls on my dorm in the dorm got a duck we all like went and in got the them dorm? yes and she raised the duck <laughs> in the dorm I swear that dorm still smells like duck to this day um and yeah she raised it it had a cage and everything she would take it out and like walk it around theta pond and oh like she gosh. yeah it was a whole like thing like on a leash no just like it followed her because she raised it so it like oh you gosh. know ducks follow and yeah. so she ended up like finally it got to be like okay we got to let it go so she like let it fly oh, away but sad. like yeah she raised a whole duck in the dorm I don't know how she got away with it that's crazy yeah that's that's something I would do though yeah that's <laughs> I think we got we got a chick and then like within a day I was like you're going back to Atwoods like I'm so sorry <laughs> but I just can't do this I know yeah they probably wouldn't be house chickens they yeah. would definitely be like you're in the coop out in the backyard yeah because I was like looking it up and I've been saying this for like two or three months now and I was looking it up I was like city of Stillwater allows chickens in within city limits yeah. as of like 2019 <laughs> so I was like Design. let's do it yeah. you know <laughs> and then you get some farm fresh eggs or whatever but yeah no I haven't yet just because I didn't realize how like crazy busy you are like when you're an athlete again. yeah and I was like huh. I don't got time. Yeah. <laughs> you have time for your cat. Yeah. Yeah. You have time for the cat, which luckily low maintenance, I feel like. Oh, yeah. 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 It just has like its own little robot litter box. So like I have to do that like yeah. once a week. But other than that, food and water, yeah. obviously. But yeah. If I was, I'm allergic to cats, but if I wasn't, I'm like, cats are just vibes. Like they just don't they need are. anything. They can just like live on their own they and are. they, you can leave them overnight and they're fine. Yeah. You can never, you like, can leave them for a weekend yeah. with some food and water and yeah. they're good. And they're just hanging out. Yeah. They don't need anything. Yeah. yeah. I wish my dog was that way, but she is not. <laughs> um, I could not leave her that long. 
<laughs> I would also feel really bad. Um, but have you been to Lost Creek Safari here in Stillwater? Um, so I tried to get my friends Carly and Colin to drive through it with me one day after breakfast. And, like, we drove through it and not all the animals were out. Yeah. So then, like, Colin just went through, like, way too fast. But I did see the kangaroos. Yes. And I think, did they have zebras? Yes. Yes. So I got to see some of those. Yeah. Um, but I think they were still, like, partially closed yeah. since it was, like, a little cold outside. Yeah. Um, but, no, I will be going. Yeah. Back. Yeah. I did a story out there with Trevor Master Giovanni, who his family owns it, and he's a wrestler here, um, which is just crazy in its own right. But um, I did a story out there before he opened it, and, and we got to go around and, like, feed all of them. And it was so much fun. Like, we fed, like, I think Gilbert was the camel. And then a literal dream come true. Yes, and then Buffy the water buffalo. Stop. Yeah, oh my <laughs> gosh. he named them all. They had so many fun names. Um, and he has like rare animals out there. He has some that are like extinct in the wild or only in captivity, and he has some there. And he's like raising them. Oh my and he gosh. knew all this stuff about all that. There's like a bunch of different lemurs, foxes, deer, pigs. I mean, there was everything. It was so cool. That is so cool. Yeah, it was really fun. Ostriches. Um, a bunch of goats. I'm going today yeah. before horseback yeah. riding. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's closed Mondays. Um, oh, but I don't know. We'll have to look it up. But um, we'll get with Trevor and figure it out. But yeah. I haven't been back out there yet, but I really want to go because well, take it's me like, when you go. yeah, it's, it's so much fun. And I'm like, this guy runs this. He's a sophomore mm. in college. He's like 20 years old. That and he's running so cool. the zoo while being, you know, one of the best wrestlers. Dang, and I just said that thing about being busy. Yeah, hey, I don't, I have no idea how he does it. He's I put me to shame. Yeah, I don't understand it. He runs a reptile facility too. He has like 500 mm -hmm. reptiles, which is not my thing. I did not visit that part because I was like, I'm okay. Um, but he has all those. I mean, I just, I don't understand. It blows my mind because I'm like, I don't even have time for one dog. And you're out here like, Knowing yeah, every zoo. name of the d animals and like when they have to eat, what kind of food they have to eat, you know, how they to keep them alive. Oh my gosh. Like, I just couldn't do it. It's very impressive. But he loves them. And they're yeah. so like, we got to hold baby goats and then feed oh. the baby kangaroos. And he had like um, wallabies and he had. Um, albino wallabies. They were like all white with like red eyes. Oh, that's a little scary. It was kind of, yeah. They were cute though. They were cute. And then some of them had little joeys that were like oh. going out and eating and like coming out of the little pouch. Oh my gosh. I was gosh. like, I would never leave I here. Go. Yeah, I would never like leave here to go to school. Like, no. or to be like, oh, I have to go wrestle now. Like, no, I want to hang out with these baby wallabies. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> like, the baby joeys. This is way better. I know. <laughs> so, yes, you definitely need to go out there. Everyone should go visit Lost Creek Safari. But, um, yeah, it was really, really cool. And it's in Stillwater, which is I know. crazy. Um, so, okay, life after softball. You said you mentioned you wanted to play pro. Yeah. So, um, is that, how is that, you know, where you also mentioned GAing. Is that an option as well? Yes, so I am GAing. Here um, at OSU? Yes. Oh, awesome. Okay, yes. so we yes, get another year. Yay, yeah, having you here. Yeah, I get to bother everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, yeah, life after softball, I really don't know, know what I want to do when I grow be up. Be a park I ranger. Like, yes, I'm going to be a park <laughs> ranger, but that's after I retire. Okay. Because I need to take a little money to get to Montana, yes. you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but no, I have, I would like to maybe, um, like, be a rep for, like, Wilson, um, Mizuno. Yeah. Um, I would also maybe like to work for ESPN. Yeah. I would like to open my own facility. Um, I don't know. I don't hey. know. The, op the options are endless. So yeah. I just, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe be a coach. Yeah. I would love to coach. I, I don't know if I want to coach a bunch of me's in college. <laughs> um, maybe like younger kids. Yeah. Um, just wherever I'm needed, I would like to be. So, yeah, I don't know. And your dream is to live in Montana. That's where you want to end up and retire? Yes. Okay. And become a park ranger. And become a park ranger. <laughs> I don't know much about Montana, but I watched Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, that's where I feel like I'm now an expert. Yeah. And like, I watched that and I'm just like, God, the scenery is so pretty. It is absolutely amazing. Yeah. It's so amazing. And like, you know how you see the videos? Videos, well, like you might not have seen them. It might just be on my Facebook because <laughs> I'm a weirdo. Um, but like of the buffalo just like walking by a car in Montana. Yeah. Like that literally happened to us. Like, it literally happened to That's us. So I was, like, cool. hanging out the window, like, with my phone, and then it, like, <laughs> beelined towards us, and I was like, ah, oh, yeah. rolled up the window yeah. really quick. But, yeah, it was just, like, walking along right next to the cars. It That's was the coolest so crazy. thing I've ever seen in my life. I remember I applied when I was graduating college, and you want to be in television, you literally apply anywhere. So I applied to work in um, 
not even Anchorage, Alaska, but somewhere in Alaska. Uh -huh. And I was like, in my mind, I just imagined I'll just wake up and there'll just be like a moose, you know, and it could just Those be like my mean, moose. Like, yeah, that <laughs> that's like my moose, you know, and I can like have my own thing, like Jessica yeah. and her moose, you know, that'd be my thing. Um, and then I did not get the job in Alaska, but a friend got a job out there and uh -huh. she posts on her story all the time, like moose just walk in that and so cool. all kinds of crazy, you know, different animals and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, man. I couldn't imagine like a moose being in my yard. I get I excited to see like a deer, but I'm yeah. like a whole moose. Oh, I would love it. I would love it. I went to Tennessee last winter break in Gatlinburg and a mama bear and her three cubs like were just like up on our porch. What? Like trying to open the doors oh my into the house. And like everyone else is freaking out, but I was like, this is so cool. Yeah. Um, and like at the house next door, like one of them was videotaping the cubs. Yeah. And just like knocked the phone out of his hand. So then I was like, was he okay? Oh yeah, he yeah. was fine. His phone just fell and like the cub was cool like story. standing over his phone. Oh it was really cool. Um, so that was like amazing. Cause like literally all week that we were there, I was like, I just want to see the bears. I just yeah. want to see the bears. <laughs> and I didn't see them. And like, we saw one of the cars that was with us driving in and like the bears literally like they've stopped and like they got up on the car and were like standing there. I was like, what the heck? Like I'm watching through yeah. binoculars. I was like, oh, why is that not me? I don't know, why is that not me? And then like on the last night there, like a, a lot of people had left and we were still there and here come the bears and I was like yes they're here for me my life yeah. <laughs> like I one night I literally I think I put like I put like a single piece of bread out and I like put my phone up and had a video recording all night long and no one took the bread and, well I woke up and the bread was gone I was like oh my gosh like it works yeah. like I'm gonna see a bear on camera it was a freaking bird oh of course, like, of course. stupid crow, <laughs> yeah, it's literally Get a crow. Out like you here. see it all the time <laughs> I was so upset but yeah when you guys played at Baylor they have two live bears on campus there how do I not know yeah. this? <laughs> yeah. Lady and Joy, I think, are their names. Um, and they have a bear habitat in the middle of campus. And they just hang out there. Oh, my gosh. My yeah. friend's a strength conditioning coach, so I'm going to have her go there. Yes, and have her take pictures. <laughs> yeah, because I used to go. I used to work in Waco um, and cover Baylor, and I would always go by there. And it was always, like, the one time that they're, like, being – taken somewhere else like for a vet appointment or something and I'm like I just want to see the bears is, are they just black bears yeah I think so okay. or brown I don't brown bears yeah black bears. um but yeah. they are they're awesome and they've got like fun facts about them and like apparently so don't quote me on this I don't know if this is accurate information but the bears used to go to the football games at Baylor like back in the day at Floyd Casey Stadium they would bring the bear on a leash and they would give it Dr. Pepper, because Dr. Pepper was created in Waco. They would give the bear Dr. Pepper as like a reward. Mm -hmm. And it would just drink like out of the leader. And there's like pictures of it. Uh -huh. And it's just standing next to the cheerleaders. There's just a bear Casual. on the field. And I'm like, okay, first of all, we need to bring that back. Like somewhere, I, I love live mascots, so I'm here for it. I love Pistol Pete, he is a live mascot too. <laughs> Like, I just am like, man, if we bullet, we have bullet, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they had a bear, and they had um, – they used to walk it through campus – Sometimes and See people that, could just that would freak me out maybe a little bit because like if that bear wants to get off the leash it's gonna it could probably but I feel like they're just they're very old and they're just like I think oh, they're just little mom like and pawpaw bears sedated I know they're not sedated, sedated but they're just like <laughs> they're they, drugged out they, I don't know they're, <laughs> they're not all hopped up on Dr Pepper yeah. but like, but like I think that they just are so used to it probably because yeah. they've been there since babies so they're just like this is my life now. Um, but yeah, I remember when they were building McLean Stadium down there, there's like that open berm area and they were, people thought when they saw the renderings that that was going to be a bear habitat because PETA was like, hey, you can have them there, but they have to have their habitat. Yeah. How cool would that have been? That it wasn't been that. so cool. But that would have been really cool. They really dropped the ball. I know. Putting that in there. I think, and like the tiger, Mike the Tiger at LSU, yeah. like I'm like, man. There's, There's a some... tiger safari like four hours away that I've been wanting to go to, too, here. A tiger? And it's not Lion King. It's not King. Tiger King? Oh, Tiger, yeah. tiger King, my bad. <laughs> not it's Lion not King. It's, it's not totally Lion not Lion King. King. <laughs> it's not Tiger King. Oh. Like, it's a tiger safari, too. Oh. I don't know if, like, it maybe it got closed down. Yeah. But, like, as far as I've seen, like, it is still... Okay. There's some interesting things in Oklahoma and yes. Hugo, Oklahoma, which is out, like, in east, uh, southeastern Oklahoma, I think. They have an elephant sanctuary. 
where like the elephants just I'm never are. leaving here. Yeah, <laughs> like there's so <laughs> many cool things that people are I just don't like, need wait, Montana. What? I no. have Oklahoma. Yeah, I have Hugo, Oklahoma, with an <laughs> elephant <laughs> sanctuary. Yeah, it's like because I think like. It's, this is like such a weird story, but Hugo was like a central location for circuses back in the day. So like the circuses would like summer there uh -huh. whenever they were not in season. And so all the elephants were there. And so they just made a sanctuary wow. and so now all the elephants are there. Okay, I'm going there next off. Though. Yeah, hey, I think it's by Broken Boat where you guys go for, really? for uh, the bonding things. Yeah, I think Hugo's okay. near there. Oh I could gosh. be wrong. I'm not a geography expert. I'm, I'm going to be there in no time. Yeah. So that, add that to your list of yeah, things. No. <laughs> and then send me pictures because I've okay. never been. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like in Thailand when you can like wash? I don't, I don't know. That would be really cool. That would. But I don't know. Okay. I need to do more research. Okay. I like finding like weird things about little towns yes. that just have interesting yes. backstories. And Oklahoma has a lot of like ghost towns too. Yeah. So like. There's one that's like really not far away at all, and like I went one day, but like it's literally like just one building. So I was like, oh. it's just abandoned. It's like yeah, just an abandoned building. And then there's another one. Um, gosh, it's like 15 minutes away, yeah. 20 minutes away. And that one was kind of freaky. It had like a big statue, and then like it was really abandoned. But then like literally two minutes like away from there, it was just like a bunch of farmland yeah. kind of and a lot of animals but yeah no there's a lot of ghost towns and there's one ghost town see I'm like a nerd about things <laughs> like this. there's one ghost town that's like I think it's like pretty far away it's like two or three hours but like it was like some kind of plant or something and it has like it had like massive amounts of like radiation or something oh. coming from it so like it's like totally like inhabitable oh yeah and yeah, I really want to go because I think it's safe to go now because, like, it's on Google. And they're like, yeah, go visit this place. It's an abandoned ghost town. Um, that's so, so scary. Yeah. I'm not – I don't think that's me. I don't think I could do no, it. No, I think it's so cool. <laughs> it's like you could just picture, like, the carriage and the, the yeah. horse in the carriage like, yeah. going up and down the street. Yeah. I think <laughs> about that sometimes when I see towns that were, like, bustling back in, like, the 1920s mm -hmm. and were, like, super popping. And then they just fell off. But, yeah. like, you can look at a picture of the town, like – when it's full and then look at it now and you're like, you can still see it. And it's yeah. just so interesting to yeah, be like, man, what happened to that town? I know. Um, but yeah, so we kind of got off track. Sorry. <laughs> but it happens. It happens. No, it happens to the best of us, I feel like. Um, so yeah, is there anything else that you would like to talk about? I know we're going to talk about your tattoos. You have a few tattoos. Which one is your, is your favorite? Oh, goodness. Um, I have one on my back that's a dream catcher that has my grandma's handwriting around it. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that's probably one of my favorite. That was my the first one I got, like, as soon as I turned 18. I have another one that I got um, when I was 16 with my mom signing off for me um, that my team got when we won the national championship. Like, we all got it. Oh, um, wow. So that was really cool. That I is also, cool. I have Isaiah 43-2 right here. Mm -hmm. It says when you go through deep waters. Oh, okay. Um, the verses when yeah. you go through deep waters I'm always with you um so yeah mm -hmm. I have I have quite a few um I have one on my foot in memory of my grandpa um so I just all your tattoos turn. like mean things I not love that. all of them not all of them <laughs> I have this just like sun on my side that I got right before I was getting the one on my back touched up and uh -huh. like I just found it I was like that is so cool I want that yeah and like that was the most pain I've ever been in in my life <laughs> so I like, oh my gosh just punch me in the face and knock me out <laughs> yeah so I don't know feel this yeah um but yeah no I, I do have a lot of tattoos and some of them I just like like yeah I'm like okay that's cool I want to get that my best friend and I just got this one right here she's from Indiana too uh -huh. um so we got little matching ones that's so cute yeah. yeah I like when there's like stories and stuff too but yeah sometimes you just get the tattoos that I have are ones that are just things that I like yeah so or liked at the time when I was 18 so <laughs> Okay. You liked it at one yeah, point. Yeah, at one point. So it just brings me back to, mm -hmm. to when life was <laughs> simpler. Uh, oh, <laughs> but yeah, and you mentioned you wanted like a sleeve of tattoos, like sir, like a, a Logan Simonek type yes, sleeve. Yes, I actually want a black and gray lion with oh, like yeah. ice blue eyes. You definitely need to get some animals. Oh my God, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I need like the entire safari. You need like a buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cute. <laughs> Big old buffalo. <laughs> It could be a cute looking buffalo, like fluffy. Yeah. I don't know. It could be like smiling. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's just like, hey, I support it. I support it. Um, but yeah. So, uh, yeah. Anything else you wanted to add before? 
before we sign off here and you get ready to go horseback riding and then we got a big obviously a big series this weekend at home against Kansas mm -hmm. and then the next weekend against Texas yes. what are your thoughts on that on, on hosting Texas here um I'm not trying to make it any bigger than yeah. what it is. At the end of the day, it's just another series. Um, they're a great program. We're going to have to play our, uh, a really good game. Yeah. Um, but if we play our game, then I'm very confident that we'll be okay. Um, but it's senior weekend, and I literally am so sad thinking about how fast this season has gone by. Yeah, um, I, yeah that's crazy. I know. Because you all play your last two series on the road. Is that right? Yes. We Our bye weekend, we're playing at Florida State yeah. and then Oklahoma. Yeah, I know, and it's just it's sad. I I'm know. like, dang, what the heck? But hopefully, a regional here, Back and a super regional, regional here. Supers, yeah. So yeah, hopefully that and that you know is in the works. I yeah. hope so. It yeah. looks like that's the case. But I mean, the crowd for the crowd for Kansas is gonna be great. The crowd for any game is great here. Mm -hmm. It's it is. wild. It is. Um, and I think the crowd for Texas. I mean, it's gonna be like oh, unreal. Yeah. Oh yeah. I can't even imagine what the corrals and what everything, like, I'm going to try to sneak out there with my credential and just be like, don't mind me, and, like, see if I can, like, wiggle my way into a corral or something. Oh, yeah, the parents, <laughs> like, the one in left center uh -huh. is, like, where all the parents Yeah, are. They'll take you in. Yeah. They'll take you in. <laughs> They're like, I sometimes go out with the social with that group, uh -huh. um, you know, and they do such a great job of just yeah. making the environment so much fun and just really getting on, you know, the left fielder. Yeah, so yeah. about the visiting left fielder, it's so much fun. Um, the environment is just Mm -hmm. It's indescribable if you it haven't is. seen it. You could have never seen a softball game, and you're going to have the best time of your life mm -hmm. at Cowgirl Stadium. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that series is going to be um, – I mean, it's going to be awesome. Orange Power it Weekend, it's going to be... It's going to be great. What I'm a good excited. weekend. I'm yeah. Excited. Yeah. So, okay, cool. Well, we are excited to continue to watch you play for the Cowgirls. Well, and you. hopefully, you know, a long postseason run. And, yeah. uh, you know, get to finish your career here with a Women's College World Series championship ring would be awesome. That would be beautiful. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, that would be great. And then, you know, we're happy we get to have you for another year. Yeah. Yeah, too. unless, like, the animals start calling. And you're like, I got to go. Yeah. I got to go. Who you knows? know, <laughs> this park ranger job just opened. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, it was great getting to know you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. That is pitcher Miranda Ellish. And thank you guys for listening and watching the Orange Power Podcast. We'll be right back here next week.